Hey mama, how do you open the garage? Oh, is it back? It's back. <laughs> do you feel pretty dumb that it was already there the whole time? Uh, it's back <laughs> after $300. Stop it, you did not That's the best reaction. <laughs> I was willing to use Okay, first off guys, let me just say I love Tesla. I love the cars, I love the company, I love everything about them. Their mission is my mission. That's why I do this for a living, okay? The fit and finish issues I've talked about with my Model Y before are gonna go away. They'll improve those just like they did with the Model 3. If you remember back when I got my Model 3, tons of issues because it was a very early model. So today, I wanna talk about something else though, a decision they made that I think is really just dumb. And it's something that they can fix. So again, this is for them to get some feedback and something that you can actually save a ton of money on. So kind of win-win here. But something that's not dumb is today's sponsor. And today's video is brought to you by Teslab. Teslab is the app that I'm sure you're familiar with by now. It's like the Fitbit for your Tesla. Now I am a partner in this company and I have helped develop a lot of these things. So if you say anything bad about it, I will take it personally. But here's what you get when you download Teslab. You get all the information and data you could possibly want on your Tesla, how your driving habits affect your efficiency, how the phantom drain of where you park your car, like my Model 3 behind me, which has been sitting there for weeks. All that data is collected and presented in a way that makes sense, so that way you can get the most out of owning your Tesla. It really is a fun way to understand what's going on. In addition, there are things like leaderboards where you can compete with your friends on the most supercharger visits, and become the mayor of a supercharger. You can learn more about your own usage of your own car and get more out of it. And you can be a part of a community and just kind of have a more fun experience. So go download Teslab today, check it out. It's available in all the app stores, or you can go to bensolens.com slash Teslab and we'll be redirected to whichever one is right for your platform. So thanks Tesla for sponsoring the show. And let's hop back to the video now. All right, so specifically what I'm talking about is Homelink. This is the built-in feature to all Teslas that you can open your garage door opener. Now, of course, you have other options, and that's what I want to talk through today. And I want to talk about why I think it's dumb that Tesla doesn't include it or even give you the option to include it. But here, let's hop over to the car now and just go through these options. All right, so here in the Model Y, I just want to show you what Homelink is in case you're unfamiliar, and then I'll kind of go through the other options. Okay, basically, when you look at your screen here and you have, you know, your information on the left, you have your map here, you have your music, etc., everything down here there is a section up in the top that is next to the uh, the sentry mode dash cam buttons right there. And this is a little, in my case right now, green button that when you press it, it'll show your actual garage. So you can name it whatever you want. You can go into Homelink settings, you can add a new one, and there you go. And then when you press that, what you'll see is the garage door open. So let me try it real quick. And there it goes. You can kind of see out the back, the garage door opening. It doesn't always work the greatest when I'm turned this way, so I had to click it twice. But to set home link, essentially what you do is you have this button, you go here, you add a new one, you give it a name, and then you stand in front of the car with the garage door opener that you currently have, and you just press it long enough, the lights will flash, and Bob's your uncle, you've got it done. And now, whenever you actually drive up, um, you can actually say, you know, auto fold mirrors, uh, auto open when arriving, etc. You can reset the location. You can do all these kind of things to program it so that way uh, it'll actually kind of just be really smart about it. And so when you're driving up, it'll automatically open. When you leave, it'll automatically close. I personally have those disabled because we have too many Teslas that would do the same thing. We tried this before and it would be opening and closing all the time without us intending for that. So of course, another option is just a garage door opener that you already have. You can put it up top in the visor like normal. And then when you drive up, you push the button. It is incredibly simple. And for the cost of what Tesla's asking for here, I think a very viable solution. So 
I think if you want an extra one of these, it's about 12 bucks. That's where the title came from. And then of course your option number two is uh, just one of these guys here, a little universal remote uh, garage door opener in case you need an extra one, don't have one, whatever. Maybe this is your fifth car. And uh, and this you can buy and then program it. I'll put a link to it down below if you're, if you're interested. Um, and then you, know, you have another option, basically the same idea, but just a new one universal in case you don't have any extras for your existing garage door opener. And the third option I wanna talk about or mention here that is still cheaper than the Tesla one is the smart garage door opener. And and the one I have is from a company called Nex, N-E-X-X. -X. And you hook it up, I'll show you what it looks like here on the garage where you, you basically just wire it into the existing garage door opener and then it has like a smart capability. You connect it to your Wi-Fi and then you get this cool app here that will actually let you just push the button and and you know do it from wherever you're at. As long as you have internet and it has internet, you could be in a different city. Now I can click the button there and you can see kind of what's happening. And then it behind me, you can see that it's closing. So this is another option. In fact, this is one of the things that Elon mentioned with why they don't include it, because he thinks that all of these will be Wi-Fi eventually and your you know car connects to Wi-Fi, so it'll just automatically work. You won't need this extra hardware. But for now, that's definitely not the case. Um, and I don't know of a way to actually do that. I can't connect my car to this wireless uh, garage door opener I have. So none of those things are exist yet. So, you know, you have to figure out what to do. Uh, how are you going to do it? So that's where it's at. Now, the Tesla option is to do the one I showed you first, which was the home link where it's built into the car. I like this option because it's the cleanest. There's no extra things hanging around. There's no extra buttons or extra steps. Like even with this smart one that I have now, um, I can't program it to automatically open when I come in. I have to like, you know, go open the app. Now on Android, I can have an actual uh, button that I can tap. So it's like a widget, they call it. I believe in iPhone, they just started adding these. So, uh, you know, eventually you'll be able to do that on, on any platform, but still you have to take your phone out you have to pop it open. It has to have a connection, this thing. There's a lot of variables there. So it's kind of dumb, right? It's, it's not ideal. So the Tesla option, the reason I think it's really dumb First off, it costs three hundred dollars, which is nuts. That's a lot of money. Now, uh, regardless of that, the dumb part is that they make you go in for a service appointment to do it. Meaning, I can't choose this when I'm ordering my car and just have it be built in. It will. It means I have to take delivery of the car, and then I have to go take it in to service to get this added. Now, when I did it, I happened to be there already for some other stuff for my car, some other cosmetic issues, and they were fixing that. I just casually asked them, hey, can you add this? They said, yes, it's the same hardware as the Model 3, which I believe also doesn't have this built in anymore. All Teslas used to have this by default. My Every car I've bought prior to this one had that. Now, I understand there's a cost. I understand all that. Let me choose it when I order my car so I don't have to come back in for service. So that would save you time. It would save me time. It would save us money because it would just be kind of a part of the process of building it, which is already a fixed overhead for. And that would also align with Elon's statements recently in this email he sent out about we have to do something to reduce the number of service visits. I think he was more speaking with uh, quality issues that were popping up and a lot of folks having to bring cars in. But this is one that they could just decide there's a checkbox. In fact, here, let me just go add this real quick for, for Tesla so you guys know how easy it is to add a checkbox. So there you go, Tesla, if you want the code, hit me up, I'll send it to you, super easy, you know, no charge, don't even worry about it. But seriously, they can add this to their website, really easy, they can add it to the manufacturing process, I assume very simply, it would save them time, it would save you time, it would save everyone time and money, all good things that we want. And so hopefully they'll change this and hopefully you will be able to save some money by choosing one of these other options. I really only did this for the video. I only paid the 300 bucks to install that just so I could make this video for you to show kind of how crazy it is and how it works and all those kind of things. So hopefully that does help you save some money. Now, if you're curious about other hacks and mods and things you can do to your Tesla, check out this playlist I created over here because there's been some fun stuff I've done over the years and I think you might enjoy it. So that's 
that's it for this one, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. As always, subscribe, like, share, do all those things. And thanks for watching. I'll see you back here in the next one.